So here's what we here's what I wanted to ask you guys. Is anybody here working on a particular gene? Yeah? What are you working on? NLRP3. NLRP3. Let me write that down. Well, basically tell it to me again, but NLRP3. And in what context? Uh, I guess like the presence and absence of it. It's like cancer cells. Uh, which kind of cancer? Uh, pancreatic, those things. pancreatic? Yeah. okay all right so everybody when you were basically select your oh. all right so let's find some a pancreatic database that we can look at so go to your database selection put in pancreatic and tumor tissue, and then let's see what we can find. There's a lot of stuff. Do any of these, here's what I'm gonna do is, I, what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna sort by samples. The more pixels, remember, the more pixels we can get, the better picture we can get. So let's sort descending. And what I wanna do is I wanna find RNA samples. Okay, it seems to me pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma PDAC has the most samples, 244. That other micro section, I'm virtual micro dissection, I, I don't know, that one doesn't seem very good. All right, so let's click on that one. And you can hear, see a kind of thing, tumors, three patient subsets, so let's see what the variable's in here. A worse patient survival. Okay. All right. So, so we selected that. 244 samples hit confirm selection. All right. So here's what I want is I want to get that gene that you mentioned, it's best friends and worst enemies because I want to figure out what's going on, right? And again, the nice thing is if it's present or absence means that the contrast should be very, very good on this, right? And what you're going to want to do is if you were doing this, you want to see, is it just binary? Is there none there and then there's some? Or is there a basically kind of a different levels, right? So let's look. So here's what I want you to do is I want you to go down to Find correlated genes with a single gene. You'll see that kind of towards the top in the middle. Everybody see that? Okay, let's do that. All right, we're gonna hit next. All right, what was the gene called again? Uh, NLRP3. And you'll see it comes up. What I want to do is click on it. All right, this better not be one of those genes that I got that one time. <laughs> now we don't have any data. What? Okay, well, which would obviously be good information to have, right? Like if it's not expressed in your tumors, then I don't know. So we've got, we've got this, what it's going to do. So hit submit. Let me take a little time. What it's doing is it's going in that database and it's taking all of the 200 and some samples and it's basically saying what genes look like the gene we put in across those samples and what genes look exactly the opposite. Does everybody understand that? Okay. If you do this, sometimes it goes faster. I still at my desk when I worked in a lab and people just look at me like, what the hell is he doing? And then somebody in the lab is like, he's doing his magic, leave him alone. <laughs> okay, so now we've got genes that are correlated and genes that are anti-correlated. Right? Here is what I'm gonna wanna do. So let's find the best friends first. So we got NLRP3 up here. 
what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let's we're basically let's just download this whole thing. So save selection as text file no header. Again, that's on your right, so click on it. And then you're gonna hit strip file, click that again. And now what we wanna do is we're gonna go file, save page as, and then save it somewhere. I'm gonna put what was the name of this thing again? It was in NLRP3. All right. Okay. So wherever you saved it, now what I want you to do is go find it. And open with your Excel. Everybody understands what an R value is, right? Maybe. It's correlation coefficient. The closer it is, a score of one would mean it's perfectly correlated to our gene. A negative one means it would be perfectly negatively correlated to our gene. And then everything's a variation in there. And you can also get p-values. So here's what I want to do is I want to find the best friends first. So I'm going to put my cursor up at C2 and I'm going to sort largest to smallest. Okay, everybody still with me? Okay. And you'll notice that LRP3 is at the top. So what I'm going to do is, and this is just based on my own experience using the program, string works better when you, don't, you have less than probably 250 genes. Right, let's go with the top 200 positively correlated genes. So what I'm going to do in this data set, select the Hugo designation, and then I'm going all the way down to 201 because we had a header. So I'm going to get the top 200 genes. And mine is CYR1, CYYR1. Wait a minute. CYYR1. So I'm going to select that, shift, and then copy those genes. Go back to your string where you have string browser. Go to multiple proteins. And let's paste those genes in. Okay. Again, since you used it once, it probably will have homo sapiens on it, so not a big deal. Now what I want to do is I'm going to hit search. Okay, it's recognizing stuff, which is good, except GTTA1 for some reason. Okay, now I'm going to hit continue. I love this is my favorite part. <laughs> Look at that. Do you think these genes are best buddies? <laughs> that looks like a knot. What are you talking about? <laughs> Absolutely. Again, if I had to define it, I had no idea what our target gene does. I would use this in the context that I want. I would find genes that have similar expression profiles over lots of studies and then look at what all these genes do. All right. Here is what string allows you to do is you can go down here. Number one is we can look, okay, recognize 197 of our 200 genes. It predicted, based on random chance, we get 229 connections. We came up with 916. The odds of that happening are way less than 1 times 10 to the negative 16. This is a network. We just discovered a gang, for sure. Now we got to figure out what the hell is the gang doing. And to do that, we go down here and we start looking at these categories. I can hit this more. A lot of times what I do is I usually, these are all the, the pathways, again, remember, that are overrepresented in our data set, our gene list, right? That given the, and here's what we can do is, I, I always like to look at it from going counts, 
um, higher to lower. So if you keep clicking that count and network, you should get to 168. Everybody there? These things don't tell me much, right? Cellular process, bi biological regulation, that, sh that can mean anything, right? But when we start response to stimulus, cell communication, this is what this is starting to tell me is this is signaling that these molecules, the reason why we're getting these associated with, these are associated with signaling in your molecule is part of that complex. So I can co color anything. So I'm going to color signaling. We also have metabolic processes starting to come up, right? Response to chemical. This is a sensing. This is telling me something is sensing that a lot of these genes are involved in, in sensing outside stimuli. But what is it? And if we look down here, click on immune system process. A lot of immunity involved in this cluster. Again, cell communication, differentiation, response to stress. That might be an interesting one. Click on that one. But again, as I study these things, this is what gives me an idea of what's going on. We also see regulation of cell migration. Let's click on that one too. Cell adhesion, cell death. Let's click on that one as well. I know these are hard. If you can't find them, don't worry about it. You can look at mine. But as I look through here, like this is the kind of vibes I'm getting. that this thing is associated with apoptosis, this cluster probably involved in cell migration, which makes sense for like a cancer that's going to spread, response to stress, and the immune process. If we look up here, actually, can you find your gene? Hey, who can find the gene? Say, what was it? <laughs> NLRP3. NLRP3. All right. Anybody see it? Where's it at? Left, right, up, down? NLR, I see a C4. There it is. Look at that. So everything it's connected to, what you can do is, these are called, has everybody heard nodes and edges? Maybe, a little bit? This is the type of network stuff that we're doing. So the genes itself are considered the nodes. The connections are considered the edges. And what we can do is we can click on any of these edges, right? If I want to find out what NLRP3 based in their data set is known to interact with, I can click on that. So in this case, NLRP3 is known to bind to TNFAIP3. It's a tumor necrosis factor. And the evidence that they're using to justify this connection is they're co-expressed and that they're also mentioned in PubMed abstracts. And you could totally show all that information. If I want to see the co-expression, it's showing me this here. It's showing you what studies that are done. And if I go back, ah, ah where the hell was I? And then mention in co mention of pub extracts again. I can hit show, and this will bring up where that where they're getting that information at. Here are the papers where it show mentions both those genes in the same extract. Right? If I was you, right? Say you guys are working on another gene that you think is important. What I would do is I would generate something like this, and then say is my gene in my cluster and then go look and see if you can find your gene. What you can also do and this is just a common sense thing, right? If I've got a cluster like this, what do you think makes a gene important? What do you think are my godfathers? My capos. Who are the guys in charge? Persons in charge. 
what would I look for? Totally, yeah, right? Here's what I could do. I've noticed people will do a study and then they just look for things with the largest fold change and they go, that must be the most important thing. That's bullshit. What you really want to do is it's not necessarily because if I get a change, if I have something, it all depends on your denominator for full change, right? Yeah. That if I have an extremely low denominator, any change in expression is going to look huge. But I have something that's constitutively expressed and it goes up, say, a thousand units. It doesn't look that big, right? So full change is relative based on your baseline. I would much rather find important genes based on how many connections does it have to other things in my list. And so what we could do is we could download, if you go to uh, exports, I could say I want to download the information based on this text. And then what you could do is you could find that gene that has the most connections. And then that might be my important gene. Does that make sense? And again, as I look through this thing, or what you also might want to do is if I colored it a certain color, right, for all these things I'm interested in, what also might be important are things that perform lots of different functions. So maybe this gene right here that seems to be connected to just about everything, interleukin-6, which is absolutely an important gene in cancer and inflammation and all that good stuff, Maybe this is my important gene. This is my godfather. Does this all make sense? Cool. <laughs> this is where I want to get to. And that by you just looking at a table, like it doesn't, it doesn't have any information like this. My job as a bioinformatician is to take all this information, gather all the information I can about something, and put it into a format that I can actually understand. All right, let's do one thing and then I'll, I'll leave you alone on this stuff.